When you're creating those liquid to powder beads, the one thing you do need is time to master the liquid to powder ratio. Why is it so important? Because too wet of a bead can lead to allergies. It's a big problem in our industry. Let's get started. I'm very excited to introduce to you my new baby, my new clean acrylic starter kit. I have come up with something that will not chase anybody out of the room. My clean acrylic liquid monomer is four ounces. That's gonna make a lot of nails. This is a custom liquid that I've designed. You can see it's got the Suzy signature color that doesn't smell. And you guys, it doesn't smell. This is perfect for working at home with it. A slow setting acrylic allows you the time to shape and sculpt with your brush. It gives you the time you need to develop your skills as a DIY or professional nail technician. Nail systems are designed to work together. I have included four two ounce size powders. I've got my white, which makes beautiful ombres and fades and Frenches. We'll have a lot of fun doing that. I've got my two special pinks. I've got Susie's foundation pink, which is very opaque and it's very nude. So it has a real beautiful skin tone for all types of skin tones. And I've got Susie's pink tint. Now I have a little special thing where I mix them together so we can create a special custom mix to make a perfect nude nail. And of course, to cap it all off, I've got my clear cap to cap the whole design that we're gonna create together and many more videos to come. Right now I'm gonna use the foundation pink and I'm gonna show you how to make those nails. Practice your liquid to powder. I've got lots of new things to show you actually. Okay, so my brush kit, I've had that for a while now and I've actually put a discount on this to help with this time. And I'm gonna use my brush from it. I've got the file and brush and I also sell them separately now. But I need a good brush. I'm starting with an eight. I think an eight is a perfect size if you're experienced or if you're new at this. But when you get your new brush, it has a packing powder in it to keep the shape. You wanna get rid of that. And you just want to break it up a little bit. Now, I saw one nail technician, actually. She gets a little, which is so smart. It was Sarah's Nail Secrets. I saw her. She really does a nice video on how to take care of a brush. So I just want to get that packing tape out of there. If you don't get the packing tape out by the time you go into the liquid, you might make it kind of gummy and it might not be very happy. Okay, so the number one thing about acrylic is learning your liquid to powder bead. That is crucial. Once you learn that, you can do anything. But I do recommend that you learn that on a worksheet or on a um, fake surface or a piece of paper, anything like that, rather than nails right away. Get the control of your liquid to powder before you take it to your own nails. And with that, that's what I'm gonna walk you through. We just need a worksheet. I have created this worksheet and you can print it off. You just go to nailcareer.com and you can print off a copy for you. If you don't have a color printer, that's okay. You can do it in black and white. We've done it in that one too. And I'll show you what that looks like. This one's a little bit bigger. So if you want a little bit bigger, I've tried to make it so it was like my size, like, like it's actual, what do you call that? Life size. And if you want a little bit bigger, some people's fingers are bigger. You can print it a little bit bigger, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is learn how to treat the brush. I've got two little jars here because I wanted you to see one that's see-through and one that's in a little um, ceramic plate if you have something like this. One of the best features of my clean acrylic system is it doesn't smell. Can you smell it, Cameraman? No, I can't smell this at all. Yeah, so like it's I could really ask him to good. smell it right now, but you might think that he's not, it's nice <laughs> he's just saying that. <laughs> the room not fumigated with right. like monomer smell. So this, doesn't smell. So you can play with this and get good at this while you're all home under the same roof and they won't even know. So I've got my liquid in the dish and I've got it also in this glass jar. I'm gonna get my brush nice and soaked with it. So I'm gonna roll it in the dish. You can see right there sideways. You don't have to roll it so much, but you do wanna keep the bristles happening the one way. Don't like smush it around. Like if you're a painter and you work with oils or, or um, acrylic or anything like that, you might kind of smush it around. Don't do that. Keep all your bristles going the one way. That's really quite important. Now, if you're working with this glass dish, just make sure you don't lean your brush in there for any length of time because you can see how it's bent like that. See that little bend? If you leave it in there for any length of time, that will uh, shape the brush to bend like that permanently. And if you're doing any of the Frenches or anything like that, that may really annoy you. 
would drive me nuts. But I also got this dish because some people have a cylinder dish like this and they want to tap on the side to get rid of some liquid. And in this dish, we tap on this side. So I just wanted to have two different dishes depending on what you're working with at home. Okay, so I've got my brush nice and soaked. One thing I do need, most important, is me glasses. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We've got our fake nails out here and we're going to create the perfect liquid to powder ratio bead. Now I'm gonna, here's my starting point, getting the brush nice and soaked, and I'm gonna tap it on the side there like that, just to get rid of some of the liquid. As you get more experience with this, you'll be able to feel the weight of liquid, literally in the brush. Okay, so tap it, and then I'm gonna go into the powder, and I'm not gonna drag, I'm not gonna bounce, I'm just gonna hold it for about five seconds. And I'm just holding it on a slight angle, and just basically on the tip. See that tiny little bead? Now, if you think you have a little too much liquid in your bead, you can also go like this and drain a little bit out. You can see it on the paper towel. I'm gonna to use the blue paper towel so you can see the color difference. Now, I'm gonna place this bead right here. And when I release, you see how it just releases off of your brush? That is the perfect liquid to powder ratio. And now I'm gonna see that bead is just sort of sitting there waiting for me to do something with it. And I'm just gonna start patting it. I'm pushing it toward the cuticle. If you're gonna get into the shaping part, right? This could be just liquid to powder ratio, then it could be, this is the section where I'm shaping it. Now this is a tiny finger. A lot of people have smaller fingers. I do find that to be a big problem is that we, as a general rule, when you're learning especially, you just put too much acrylic on the finger. So it may be a very nice nail, but it's too big for that particular finger. So that's why I went for sort of a life-size finger here. So as I'm shaping, I'm patting and pulling down. Now I particularly am not trying to do this in a one bead. The reason being is because it's not necessary. I'm also now flattening and try to make it a little bit smooth toward the cuticle without going onto the skin. You don't want to do that. Now see how I'm trying to keep that guy within that space. See how you don't need a giant bead and look how much I'm covering. Okay. You can almost let the acrylic do the work for you. Once you get the right liquid to powder ratio, it just sits there waiting. And in this case, this product sort of moves a tiny, slight little, little bit for you and moves into that cuticle space. But if you have the right liquid to powder ratio, it basically does the work for you and it just sits there and waits. See, it's still sitting there. I can still manipulate it. This is a slower drying product, so it gives you time to manipulate it the way you want before it dries. That's why acrylic is so hard because it's wanting to dry before you've finished putting where you want to put it. So here we are. That's pretty good. Me happy with that. Okay, now I'm going to get another bead and finish up the end. So this is a very, very tiny little, let's go into the jar this time. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the jar and look how much I'm getting on the side. See that? Barely breaking the surface tension of the monomer inside this little jigger here. See that? Just barely touching it. And I still might even tap the side of it a little bit. Don't want too much liquid. And I'm going to lay this in the tip in there again. Three, four, five. Then I'm going to examine this bead and say to myself, is this too big for that little tiny tip? If you feel it is, this is what you can do. You can actually lay it on your paper towel and cut it in half <laughs> and pick it up. And then we're going to put that on the end. Okay. I'm going to clean the brush off. If you find the brush is kind of sticky, that's because there's stuff in the brush. The no stuff in the brush means you can pat it and shape it the way you want. If it's sticky and you can't shape it the way you want, it's because there's stuff in the brush. See this brush there now? Get rid of that stuff. And then you can pat, pat, pat. And I'm gonna shape it down to the end. Now this is an already finished shaped nail in this photo. You don't have to make sure it's exactly like this because there's filing and sculpting all to be had, which is the next step. So don't get too crazy about trying to make sure it's perfect within this particular shape because it doesn't matter. I 
do this a lot when it's on the nail too. See how I'm just shaping that in there like that? See that? So I've got two beads. Now, if we're gonna go into the sculpting part of it, we wanna finish this particular nail, we're gonna put a bead in the center for the apex. Now I've got two little pictures here on either side of this particular nail. This one is a shorter version of the oval shape that we just, I kind of just landed on this one. And this one, you see how it's the sideways version of? That's to show you how thin it is near the cuticle and how thin it is near the end and then how thick it needs to be in the center. Right now, if I had to turn this one sideways, the one we've been working on, we're going to have a, a bump here and a bump here, and we're going to have like a, a little valley, a little gully in the center. It is starting to still, um, it's still kind of uh, melding together, you might say. It's moving ever so slightly because it's not quite cured completely yet. You don't want to do that for people, but you can blow on this when it's on the paper. So you just blow it on a little bit if you're impatient and you want it to dry a little bit faster. Now I have just printed this off and I'm working directly on the paper, but you could, you know how this, if you have somebody that has an old photo album, you can take one of those things out and slip it inside the plastic and you could work on it and just peel it off every time. You could do that if you like. Okay, so I am now gonna get another bead and put it in the center just to show you that arch that we want to create and you know for the purpose of this video I really wanted to focus on the liquid to powder ratio because it's so important um, so this is getting into more of the sculpting part if you want to do that part okay I'm going to go into the dish again a little sushi dish and look how much I'm going I'm not going to soak my whole brush I'm just going to get the edge of it just a little bit of liquid again I do not need a giant bead and again I'm not going to bounce I'm not going to drag I'm just going to hold it so it can absorb all in one moment dusting off the powder and you can see that little bead there. Now I still think that bead is a little bit big so I'm going to get rid of some moisture out of there. I might even just chop the bead in half once again. Just get rid of some of it and take that and put it in the center. Yeah that, that works good for this size nail. Clean off my brush. That's the ticket right? If you go in with a dirty brush it's going to stick to itself and at the end you're going to end up with a clumpy brush and that's really going to annoy you. You just want to put, pat it down. See how it's just sort of sitting there waiting for you? It's just kind of waiting for you to tell it what to do. And don't get me wrong, it is curing, but it's a slower curing. So it gives you time to sculpt, gives you time to lay in the product. So I am going to try to blend it out toward the free edge. There you go, you see that? Now I saw a girl, <laughs> I think it was 30 years ago I worked in a salon. The first salon I worked in actually. And a girl used to take the brush and brush backwards like this. And even as a newbie myself, I thought, what? <laughs> and every now and then I'll use that move. It's not something I use and was unconventional at the time. But you know what, guys? Whatever works for you. <laughs> As long as you're not hitting the person's skin on a constant, regular basis, use whatever works. Create your own style. Okay, so now we have ourselves a little nail there. So that's what this one beside here is to just so you can see the depth. And that's, I have a little, little diagrams over here on this side. I don't know if you can see them. I'll move this a little bit so the camera can catch it. This is the apex placement. What I'm trying to show a diagram in here is when you have a shorter nail, the apex doesn't have to be that high. But when your nail's a little bit longer, see this is showing the depth of this end here. See the thickness? That means when this is longer here, this thickness needs to be bigger. It's really pretty simple. Okay, so now you've completed the nail and I've got several different shapes here. I've got almond, square, round, coffin, stiletto, oval, and my signature, Susie's signature shape. Just different shapes that you can try. I've got more videos coming because below, I've got a lot of designs to show you. The ombre, the French traditional, the reverse French, and the French chevron. Okay, so on my little um, worksheet here, it's important to get the right liquid to powder ratio. Create small beads rather than big beads. And the reason why I say that is because as you get better at this, you will be able to do it in one bead. 
but it's not a goal that you want to try to go for right out of the gate. It's something that you can work up to. And one day you're just going to say, I did this in one bead. Cool. And it really doesn't matter one way or the other. It's just something we can do. And it's kind of cool. And the next is cleaning your brush in between application helps. Don't forget that keeping your brush clean makes it a lot easier to sculpt and shape that acrylic the way you want to get that done. So before you put your brush away, you want to make sure it's clean. So I just sort of take a look at it and make sure there's no product that's in it. And sometimes to double check it, I will take it and I will gently twirl it against my paper towel. And if it's kind of looks like gummed up and sometimes when the bristles are splitting like that and spreading open, you can see if there's any product in there. And if there is, then you just want to gently get it out. Now I will take my finger and I will go like that. If you're doing with an acrylic tip, sure, you can do that. It's not going to bother you. But if you're touching the skin, I wouldn't recommend doing that because if you get anything on your skin, you don't want to get any contact dermatitis. Okay. It's an allergic reaction to product touching it over and over. So I will just make sure there's nothing in it. And then I will condition it with my monomer once again. I'll just make sure I put it in there. And then I will just drain off a little bit. Then I will get my cap and I will store it inside my cap. And this will keep your brush nice and soft for the next time you go to use it. But make sure you put it in your cap. That's really, really important. Okay. Okay. One other thing I wanted to tell you. What was it now? Oh, yes. If by any chance, and this happens, don't be hard on yourself. I've done it with a $200 brush. If you get acrylic stuck in there, and let's say you, you come to your nail table and you want to get started on, and then you realize the brush is all kind of gunged up and hard with acrylic that was in there because you didn't see it, don't panic. That happens. What I will do, I will get a little bit of acetone. I know some of you are not going to like this, but I've been doing it for 30 plus years and it works fantastically. Stick your brush in acetone, but don't leave the tips that it's just kind of leaning in there. Again, you might bend it. Just hold in there for a few minutes, like three minutes maybe. Swish it around a bit and then take it out of the acetone and then just check the brush and it should release the acrylic that's hardened and soften it right up that it falls right out of your bristles. Now you don't want to leave the acetone in there. It will evaporate, but it can dry out the bristles if you leave it in there for too long. So again, take it right back to your monomer, condition the bristles in there and just drain it off a little bit and pop it right back in there and you're good to go to use it. It won't ruin it. Okay. I'm thrilled to team up with Joya Mia for my Susie's collection kit. You can find the links in the description below.